right. Let's get started. Everyone's in. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Mark is busy. Appreciate your attention, guys. Uh, there's a lot going on, um, but uh, I'm going to give you some value over the next hour or so. 45 minutes, 40, 45 minutes, and then we'll take some questions. Pretty sure you can all see my disclaimer screen. You know the rules, guys. Um, risky. Train the risky. And, you know, this this webinar really is just, you got to treat it as entertainment, right? I'm not kind of telling you this is how to trade or giving advice, all that usual stuff, and just understand the risks. Because and the reason we do these disclaimers is, you know, we just, we just if we want to play the game, understand the risk of the game. And I think, you know, you guys are all big boys and girls. You understand the risk of the game. But it just, I don't like seeing when people are involved in this, what is a risky business, and they don't really get that there is a risk involved, you know, this, and so, you know, we have to have these disclaimers, guys. So take a quick glance at that and just understand that this webinar is just me talking through, um, you know, just some, some ideas and thoughts and definitely not recommendation. Okay, so let's see if we can get to the next slide. I think we're good there. All right, let me get my notes back up. Okay, so today we're going to talk about intraday price reversals. This is um, this is great because we're doing a multi-webinar series. We are doing um, calling day trading club, and this this webinar is part of a kind of multiple part uh, webinar. And really, you want to focus on intraday price reversals. So we're going to talk about learning how to quickly assess if the market conditions are right for reversal. We're going to talk about why levels are more likely to hold than others. Um, time between rotations, that's something I, I really, really think is super valuable. So I hope that I can I can put that across and, and you can get some value from that, guys. Um, and then deciphering the subtle clues from from trend duration and, and price urgency. So I'm going to approach this slightly differently, I think, from usual reversal techniques, because most of the times we look at theoretical candlestick patterns, right? We look at you know, these these theoretical candlestick patterns, they definitely play a part. Um, but I want to take this to another stage and I want to get a real understanding of the conditions that precede the reversal, because I, I really think that that is is, is is crucial. You know, understanding that and really knowing when to trade a reversal rather than just looking for these candlestick patterns all the time, it, it just separates you because, you listen, you, you, you know, if you're an active trader, Right, you know that over trading is, is ultimately our nemesis, right? We don't want to be constantly looking for trades. I know sometimes it's exciting. We've got to kind of throttle that back and say, right, over trading kills us. We want to identify the best possible times to trade. And so if we're aligned with mean reversion, that means that we're constantly looking for reversals, right? Because that's a mean reversion type trade. It's that spring stretched. We're trying to find the point where the string is sp a a string, a string would break, a spring is stretched. And then timing that for that contraction back. And that's the game we're playing. So the better we can get at spotting those higher probability reversals, the better our trading is potentially going to be, right? So anyway, before we get started with this, um, there's a checklist that accompanies this webinar. And I'm going to give you a copy of the slides as well. If you go to tradersmastermind.com forward slash reversals, reversals, yes, plural, uh, you can download the, the checklist that we'll talk about in a moment. And it accompanies this, and I give you a copy of the slides as well. That gets sent to you uh, via email. Okay, so quote here. I love quotes. Jack Schwager, Market Wizards books. If you haven't read the Market Wizards books? Absolute must read. They're fantastic. Uh, he's, I mean, he's on now six or so. Uh, great, a great uh, series of, of of books. I like Hedge Fund Market Wizards. I thought that was a really good one. His late, latest one is Unknown Market Wizards, but some of the classics are, are well worth watching. Anyway, Jack says. Dangers of watching every tick are twofold, overtrading and increased chances of prematurely liquidating good positions. So that means, you know, that we just need to be very mindful and cautious and, and just think and not react to stuff so so aggressively and just take our time and just don't necessarily watch every tick because every tick, every tick matter. Unless you're a hyper scalper, you know, probably not. Probably not. OK, so what is a reversal? So, you know, a reversal is. Let, let's understand this first before we go into some of the nuances and the subtleties of reversal. I really want to just take a step back and just look at things and, and understand why 
you know, price moves, understand why reversals happen. Because for me, that's always been something that I've wanted to do. I wanted to look at the market through a completely different lens to everybody else, because I know that if I do that, I am going to see things that others aren't going to see, and it's going to set me apart. So, you know, thinking about what are we looking at? What is a reversal? So reversal is a turning point in the market, obviously. And, you know, it it can either be a temporary, either it's a pullback and a trend, so the market comes back and then it kind of finds a little level and reverses back up, or it can be major. So we're talking about both of these to a certain extent. We're not trying to uh, differentiate too much. We're just trying to look at where these swing points are. And so it can either be major and intraday high or low if we're trading intraday, um, you know, or it can be just a temporary reversal. So it's fine, but we uh, just at one point on this is we have to kind of dis make the distinction between the two and the profit potential of each. Right, because you know, if you if you happen to get a trade of the low of the day, then that might give you a nice place to be, gives you options to kind of run back to a VWAP, run back to a close, run back to a prior day's high, maybe even hold for a two-day move. But if you're kind of trading a kind of temporary reverse, or like a little pullback in a trend, or just a little range-bound play, you probably just want to take a quick scalp. And so differentiating between the two, you know, helps you kind of frame the trade, helps you structure the trade, and helps you go into the trade knowing, hey. I am looking for this specifically. And so you've got the internal conflict. Sometimes we have that internal conflict, right? Of, oh, I should have held the trade. But if you go into it saying, no, this is an A to B trade, it's a temporary reversal. I'm, 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 I'm looking at it as that. Then you can't beat yourself up if you take the trade off at point B and it carries on running. And similarly, you know, if you take the trade and you say, I'm going to hold it and you snatch the profit, you know, you, you have to kind of see how to get better at that. So the better we can get spotting reversals, the better our trades are going to be. So absolutely. It's a skill that's worth honing, right? So, what causes a reversal? Um, let's 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 go back and consider this question in terms of supply and demand, right? Supply and demand, and I, I I really, you know, I always try to look at the market through the lens of supply and demand because that's what it is, right? That's why the market moves. You know, that increased supply, that increased demand is causing this movement. So often, I step back and go, right, it's just this is just a voting machine ultimately, and so. What's happening at the stall point? And the stall point being that point where we just doesn't reverse yet, it just stops. And then what happens that causes price to turn the other way? And you know, looking at through supply and demand lens, and I did a podcast the other day on Traders Mastermind podcast where I talked, what lens do you look at the market through? And this is the lens that I like to look at through. And hopefully, you know, you might go, hey, you know what, that's not a bad way to look at the market. So um think of these three scenarios. Okay, so we're talking about reversal, what causes a reversal to happen? Supply demand, think about this. Three scenarios cause this price to stall. And the reason I'm going through this now is because this then lays the foundation for some of the advanced stuff we'll talk about in a moment in terms of why the market will reverse, what to look for in reversals, the structure, all this type of stuff, but just kind of starting off at the root and going, okay, let's think about this. So why does, the, why does price stall? So imagine the price is going lower here. We've got the five minute chart of, of, of the DAX or the German 40. Pepperstone's tax equivalent comes down, sellers, it stops, right? So sellers now, think about this, sellers aren't willing to sell any lower. If they are, there's a buyer holding it. So we kind of get this scenario where it can be, it's normally a mixture of all these, but sellers aren't willing to pay a lower price. So they go, well, you know what? It's down at seven, uh, whatever that's 14, 350. I'm not prepared to sell it at 14, 349. And then you don't get that print. Okay, that's just what happens. You won't get that print. And buyers are happy to kind of hold bids. And that's the stall point, right? The buyers are happy to hold bids. So either sellers stop or buyers are happy to hold bids. And more likely it's both. So sellers are probably still selling some, but there's a buyer who says, you know what, I'll, I'll start to accumulate there or, or an assortment of buyers. I'll start to accumulate there. That's where we'll kind of start to buy this. I think it's gone deep enough for, for whatever reason that may be. Now, it might be short-term traders. It might be longer-term traders. It might be, you know, anything. And we can't really decipher that. But what we can say is that's the stall point. So it's normally a mixture of the two there. So Think about then what happens, right? Think about what happens. So if you think about the why price is reversing, so it's hit that stall point, and then buyers now become more aggressive, and buyers start hitting the offers, and that's not enough, but they start hitting the offers and they start raising those bids. If you ever, if you ever seen an order book, you know the orders are stacked up, and basically when buyers start hitting offers, it leaves a little bit of a gap on the order book. Unless a seller fills that gap, a buyer goes, oh, I'll bid that. I'll fill that spread and just go and high bid and they'll start to lift off. So, you know, I know we're going kind of technicals here, but, you know, understanding why the prices turn. And then often we get that reversal because then buyers are like, okay, this is the turn. Uh, sellers, we've already had this liquidity like 
vacuum if you like because all the sellers have been pushing it lower pushing it lower pushing it lower you imagine you've got a group of 10 sellers and they're all the majority of their position is done that's taken a lot of liquidity out of the market so very often that leaves a little bit of a gap on the order book and ultimately we can get a reversal because you know someone then just goes on buying and buying and buying and buying and buying and then the order book's not so thick because it's come all the way down hasn't been filled on the way down and often we can get that reversal so i uh, maybe you've got into some technicalities here but sometimes i think that thinking about the structure of the market and if it helps to go and kind of look at some order book stuff and and think well that's what's going on with institutions not necessarily you don't need that from a trading perspective but you know what causes a market to move i think that's you know a super key um and you know liquidity just a quick mention of liquidity guys i think you know it can take um you know a 10 lot in the middle of the night um the markets so you've got the dow ym futures sitting there the book's going to be thin and it can take hardly anything for it to move a few ticks um but you know during the day it might take maybe a thousand a bit much for the way but it might take a lot more and so you know liquidity definitely plays a role whether reversal can happen or not it's not so important but it's worth understanding okay so now we can never never predict a reversal with certainty you know Many people claim to be like, oh, yes, we've got this, this perfect system that spots the reversals every time. And listen, guys, real world, real world, you know, we're in the trenches. We know the, the score. It's, it's not possible to do it. Um, but don't, we don't need to necessarily. We can stack the odds in our favor by looking at all the information. I think that this is something that many traders are looking. You know, I'm absolutely guilty of this myself in the, you know, I've, I've, I've always tried to find all these reversals. And I've not thought about well, how do I stack the odds in the favor of the reversal happening? Right, because no one knows if reversal is going to happen, and that's why we've got our stop loss position, and we'll talk about those at some other point. But you know, we want to stack the odds in our favor and give ourselves a higher chance of getting on a reversal. That's what we can do. And if we can put all this data in together and variables and go, hey, this is a decent chance of this reversing, and the risk is structured, and I've got a decent potential reward for the trade, then then why not take the trade? If you can accept the risk and there's a decent R multiple and reward, and you've got the odds of it turning, you believe more in your favor, then all of a sudden it now becomes a game of numbers. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. So, okay, no one can predict reversals, but we can stack the odds in our favor. And we want to assess four things, the conditions, which should give us clues, the levels, which helps with our timing, the trade risk to ensure we've got no hidden tail risk and the trade risk actually in the deal and the trade structure. So a good risk reward ratio and, and a high probability of success. Now, in in um, in in this in this webinar, guys, I'm going to talk about the first two. So this is the first part. And, and, and because it's so important, I really want to push this home and spend some time going deep into the conditions and the levels, understanding Let's stack the odds in our favor. Let's try to find the chance, the, 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 the position in the market where we've got the highest probability of reversal happening. Let's not just pick pick chart patterns and, and stuff, which are all valid, but let's let's go a bit deeper. Let's think more professionally. So this webinar, conditions and levels, deep into that. And the next one, um, which will be, uh, we'll talk about trade risk and trade structure. And, and you know, if you download the, the checklist and the slides, uh, you'll get an email saying when that's coming out. So, okay. Let's uh, let's look at conditions. So conditions. And by the way, questions you stick them in. I'll get to them at the end. I know sometimes I'm going to go over things, you know, um, and you may be like, "What do you say there? Do you understand that?" Uh, you know, any questions, please feel free. Now, if we get around to them at the end, we absolutely will. So conditions checklist. Think about why price turns. Consider how important conditions are in predicting turning points. Okay, because no 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 single reversal is the same. You think about it. So we're going to look at what is the duration of the move what is the urgency of the move we're going to look at these in deep deep depth in a moment what's the typical time between rotations one of my more favorite things to look at we've got a catalyst present or not and is the time of day a key factor and what's the higher time frame position so by the way yeah the pdf with all this stuff on uh, tradersmastermind.com forward slash reversals okay so think about duration Think about duration. The more entrenched a trend is, the less likely it's just to, it is to just to kiss that level and reverse. And 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 all these things, guys. By the way, generalizations, right? Um, you know, there's no hard. There's always edge cases in trading. You know this. You're in trade. You're a trader. You get this. You understand this. But all we can do are, are kind of broad rules and say, right, 
this is the broad rule with this edge case and this edge case are exceptions to the rule fine that's why we have stops and that's why we you know we never go kind of over crazy leverage on one particular trade we try and find generalizations and use those generalizations to stack up and create this edge so duration long the price has been in the trend you know it's it's generally harder to reverse and so there's two ways that i like to look for a reversal an intraday reversal when we've had that long trend and and honestly if we've had a big strong trending day most of the time i'm sitting back and going if i'm not on board the trend unless i see something very specific then i'll probably look for the next day you know so so when you've had that long persistency of trend don't expect just to tag and turn you know very often we'll see two things we'll see that exhaustion type reversal where it's run 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 and then it's just finally the bars just can't take any more and they're just coming and they're lifting offers lifting offers lifting offers lifting offers and it's the last batch and they're just like oh i've got to get in or it's short covering just get that final flush you just get a spike in price sometimes you get a little wick a little spike in volume and then it rolls back off that high you know this is the exhaustion type reversal very often very often happens um but the the, the thing is you know that's really what we kind of wait and see. We don't want to just see it go to a level because there's some momentum behind it. Everyone talks about the train, the train moving fast and standing in front of a train. The trend's the train. The duration, if that trend has been going for a long period of time, we've got a big duration there, then it's it's just got so much momentum and weight behind it. It's chug, 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 just expecting it to reverse on a dime. It does happen from time to time, but you know, not having that expectation. So how are you going to fade that exhaustion or a deep run and winding and a, re a retest? And let me show you one of those in a moment. I'll so the deeper unwinding and retest is this is that you kind of see the level it tags the level and very often it's going to run through the level when you've got a big duration it's going to run through the level and it's going to have that deeper unwinding and i call that kind of counter trend move it just just tests some sellers in in, in the case of a, a kind of reversal to downside just some sellers enough comes back and retests so these type of reversal patterns when you've had a big duration myself personally i'm very careful and i will either look for an exhaustion move and if i'm taking the exhaustion move i'm going to be very very quick and take that exhaustion move and come out or if i'm looking for a bigger kind of rotation lower i want to see an unwinding of price a retest of highs that starts to fail and then maybe i'll start to look and i'm not going to go crazy and look for massive like, intraday rotations back when we've got a big strong trend day because it, it, it's, it's, it's like a less likely thing to happen but i think that when you've had duration of trend and persistency of trend you know if you are going to trade counter trend number one be very very careful with it but number two be very strict about what you're looking for and all this is kind of for me none of this is just like stepping in front of the train at the key level well it's a key level of course it's going to stop there because it tends to not because there's so much weight behind it and the levels tend to be dismissed so much more so you know you you just need that duration and then driving up and then that counter trend rotation and a second test so i'm always saying to myself all right if i'm going to look for reversal here i want to see the high put in i then want to see a rotation lower and then i want to see a retest so i want to see three things which is very different to how i might trade reversals in another in another market condition we'll look at those in a moment so it's it's kind of framing the um what's happened the prior price action before the move makes all the difference. And this is why we don't just bundle it in like every other trader out there and say, hey, it's this double top, it's a blah, blah, blah. No, no, we go deeper than that. And we kind of understand the nuances of why something's happening. And more importantly, what, what's happening before the before the move. Uh, okay, so I skipped on extra slide there. So the next thing we look at is, is urgency. So we've had the duration of this, how long the trend's been going. And urgency is, how quickly price moves prior to a potential reversal. And quick moves often equal quick reversals because it leaves a liquidity vacuum. It leaves like buyers, 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 buyers. They haven't had time to kind of fill those order books up, the order book levels up as it goes going. You get a very quick move very quickly or an extended move very quickly. And that's much more likely to reverse. So duration means that it's such persistent, it's plodding, it's plodding. And we've all been in days, guys, where we've had that grinding trend day which has gone grinding 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 like ah uh, just a few more tick grinding grinding and it's just such a hard thing to change because the sentiment's embedded in etc whereas urgency is like Phew. you know someone someone's just suddenly gone ah uh, you know I, i'm more sensitive to to time than price and just very quickly point on that just imagine you've been given an order 
Okay, you are working for uh, – just put yourself in the position that you're executing an order, right, for somebody. It's a large order. You're either going to be price sensitive or time sensitive. So the difference between the two is if you're price sensitive, you're like, okay, well, I, I'm going to work my order. I'm going to leave a limit in or I'm going to wait for the price to come to me because price matters more to me than how long it takes. And you might be instructed this or it might just be you, your preference. You might say, okay, I don't care if it takes me all day or two days or three days. I just want a really good price for this. And a really good price for me is, is less than X. And so you're price sensitive. And that is when you get support levels put in. And there's no urgency. Whereas when you're time sensitive, it's like, right, come on, chop, chop. I want this done in 30 minutes. Get this order filled. If you're time sensitive, you're going to start lifting offers. You're going to start paying up, paying up, paying up, paying up, paying up. That creates urgency, right? And so, you know, we get that slow grinding trend. It's more like, okay, there's much more price sensitivity there. They're trying to get the best bid. When there's urgency, you get a sharp angle. Angle of the trend's quite sharp. Speed of the move's quite sharp. So you could use a linear regression if you wanted to put a tool on it. But that sharpness of move often is someone who's very, very, very time sensitive. Execute, 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 execute. And then what does that do? Well, that leaves a big liquidity vacuum below. And it's very easy then, going back to the point of liquidity, for price to come lower and part, start to push lower because there's not much support there. It, they've, they've, all the urgency is gone. It's like, okay, we're done. And so that's taken out a bunch of buyers. And now there's this, if there is supply coming, and sometimes we get these stalls at highs, which means there's no actual supply. But if we do get supply coming in, then it's left that kind of vacuum, if you like, and, and the uh, reversals can be very quick. So what does that mean to us as, as kind of retail day traders is to kind of look at the angle of the trend, look at the speed of the move and say, okay, if we've got short duration, but quick urgency, uh, we'll talk about catalysts in a moment, which kind of change things a little bit. That's very often going to be a quick reversal. And so then our levels, again, we'll look at those in a moment, become more valid. And we start saying, all right, quick move, very urgent, angle of trends, pretty strong. Chance of that coming down, or at least offering a short term snatch and grab trade is quite high. Now, this example is obviously a full, full scale reversal, but there's not always going to be that. But very often, you know, we've seen them guys, these V-shaped reversals that come down really deep. And those of you FIB guys start drawing your FIBs on your 50% and going, whoa, it's down 50% and it's quite quick. But that's just the liquidity that's that, that's kind of caused that. Um, all right. So um, I'm just looking at my notes here, guys, at the same time. I want to make sure I don't miss anything because I feel like this is, uh, you know, this, there's some good stuff. here. I think this is, you know, this is tactical things. In the game with these webinars, guys, is that, you know, I feel that if you can take a few nuggets away, that's all you need. You know, ultimately, you know, maybe not everything resonates with you, but you kind of go on this and go, actually, is that, that, that sounds interesting. Can I implement that in my trading? Um, and so, you know, not everything's going to be spot on for you, but maybe hopefully one or two things. That's really the objective. So anyway, back to the uh, that's a slide. So time between rotations. I think I mentioned this before um, on when I had a chat with with, with Luke. And it's, it's a difficult to, thing to kind of put into to context. Um, but, but really, if you think about the market, sometimes literally tells us what it's doing. And sometimes you've got to open our damn eyes and go, well, look, you know, what the market's showing us. And sometimes it, the depth, the rotations, by the way, rotations, I mean, you know, we, we're lower and higher, just that oscillation of the market, just the rotation up and down and up and down. You know, that's what I mean by a rotation. Like, how do we go, how far do we go from high to low before we stall and try and push back up again? And we could still be in a trend, but ultimately it's that oscillation between swing point to swing point, swing point to swing point. And, you know, often we can eyeball these or we can use the measure tool. Many of you guys use, use trading view and Pepperstone links up to trading view now. Use that. I think it's the measure tool or it's a tool. It's the measure tool. It's absolutely the measure tool. Uh, you can, you can literally measure the rotation. And this example on gold here, it's like these are all nearly pretty. Uh, they're never going to be absolutely spot on, but you've got ten dollar rotations. So you kind of look at this and go, right? How do we use this? And and very very often, guys, this is happening in markets. You're trading your DAX, you're trading your Dow, you're trading your Nasdaq, you're trading your crude oil, you're trading your gold, you're trading whatever you're trading. And I'm not saying this happens all the time. Very often, the chart is screaming at you and saying, for whatever reason, we are rotating from here to here. And then we're stalling and we're rotating from here to here. And the magnitude of those rotations is very, very similar. So you go, ah, well, how do I use that? Well, some of you guys now have probably got light bulbs coming on and going, well, geez, I, I get it. I get it. Because actually, if price is coming to a key level, and we've been talking about levels in a moment, and you, and you, or you know you're having $10 rotations, for example, and you're trading gold, 
and it's coming to that key level that you've marked on and you've had that $10 rotation from high to low, well, you know, that's a good chance that that level is going to get kissed and pop off it, right? Or if you're trading pullbacks, okay? This is more of a, okay, this is just about a downtrend, right? But range downtrend slightly. You know, if you had more of a, an angle trend and you were kind of looking to trade the reverse, uh, the, the trend reversals to the downside for a continuation move, then if you're seeing these $10 rotations, then why would you get short at $7 rotation off that low? You'd be like, wait, let me just wait. Now, obviously, that, okay, sometimes it's not always going to work. And it's not, it's not always going to go to the perfect $10 and say, I've done $10. But if the market has been doing that for the past multiple hours, for whatever reason, where there's an algo in there that's programmed to sell at $10 pops, maybe whatever, we don't even need to worry about it too much. We can go, all right. So why don't I use that to my advantage and start to look, okay, we're eight dollars up, nine dollars up, okay, it's coming to a level, it's stalling at nine, ten. It let, all right, it's stalling. And then we start to add all the things up. This is what I talk about you know, stacking layers of edge. If you've got this idea and say, hey, the, the rotations, the rotations, the rotations, the duration of rotations, you go, right, hmm, actually, oh sorry, the 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 price, the price movement in rotations. I put time between rotations, then ultimately, ultimately that's something else, but ultimately I mean, okay how big is the rotation, then you can start to align your trend and uh, your trade with that and go, the market conditions are X. This is what it's presenting me today. Why don't I align with that? Because if that makes sense, because I'm just going to make the assumption that we're going to continue like that for however long. And, and maybe it breaks, but that's why you've got your risk management in place. But if you can see now, if you're going, well, I have a $10 rotation, $10, $10. Okay, the third time, the fourth time, you're like, right, if we start to if you get short, well, I'll look for a ten dollar. I won't look to overstay my welcome. So it's something that is hard to, uh, um, I guess, it's hard to spot. But if you're looking for it, then you can spot these. And honestly, guys, when you start to just step back a little bit, take all your all your, all your stuff off your chart, and just look at the chart, and just almost say, you know, talk to me, bro. Talk to me. <laughs> Maybe not quite like that, but almost like, come on. What are you telling me? What are you telling me? What's the story? What's the story around this chart? And if you're stepping back rather than a really myopic view of every single candle, and you're stepping back and you're going, okay, look, look what we've done here. Look, and then you start drawing out the rotations or even the time between rotations we didn't cover, but sometimes you get that and you can use that time time tool that kind of says, right, well, every hour we kind of get a little bit buying every hour. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a moment, but just sometimes the, the answer is just there for us. That doesn't necessarily mean that we just align perfectly with that, but it, it's going back to the first point, it's stacking edge, stacking edge, stacking edge. And if we stack edge, then we've got a much better chance of success. You can see how this is much better for us and gives us much more, um, you know, allows us to hone our skills and mean less over trading and waiting for these real juicy opportunities. Of course, we're still managing the risk. Of course, I don't know what's going to happen. But when we start to stack all this stuff, we're only a few, few kind of points in. We start to stack all these things up. And we go, oh, yeah. All of a sudden, it's a, you're looking at it through a different lens. All right, catalyst present. So, um, you know, I'm a big fan of kind of really understanding the the, the, the catalysts, right? Um, and I won't spend too long on this, but because I know many of you probably trade the currency pairs, majors, uh, maybe trade the indices. So we don't often get the catalysts so much as maybe we do uh, if we're trading individual stock. But, you know, you guys can't trade some stocks. But ultimately what I mean by catalyst is if the market has been repriced, so reprice is when, um, you know, we have earnings on a stock. Fed's come out and said something. There's been a, an unusual hike or there's been an on-farm payrolls or any economic data. And, you know, you can get the economic calendar. Pepper's has got the economic calendar. Make sure, you're checking, make sure you're checking that out so you understand where the tail risk is coming from the day. And you're not always going to get a catalyst, right? But very often, not very often, but sometimes, I can say you're all, not always going to get it very often. But occasionally, let's say, occasionally you're going to get something where there's a catalyst. And it just changes the dynamic and people's perception of the price. So uh, that's interesting, right? Because if we get a catalyst, that all of a sudden makes something appear more bullish and go, well, this was valued at X, but now with this news, it's valued at X plus Y. That's how people perceive it. That's what a reprice is, is that's a rush. And we suddenly, you know, we kind of get those spikes very often. Um, and so if we are trading after a catalyst and from a reversal perspective, the momentum ignition is, is different, but we're focused on reversals in, in, in this talk, but you know, we should wait for obvious signs of reversal. So the double test, just like that trend that's been grinding and grinding and grinding, when there's a catalyst, just, just 
you'd be very careful about stepping in front of it because you don't know where the reprice is going to end. And there's a lot of people going, trying to get through a very small doors. People trap short, trying to get out. There's people trying to get on board, trying to get in. It just causes, that's a different strategy. But if you're trading reversal, the first kiss, the second kiss is often the way. And very often, guys, we get, um, I say very often, and quite a few times recently, we've had something that's appeared to be bullish and then is reversed. And very often, that is a really good trade and, and we're going to depth at that at some point in the future but that unexpected response as i call it is it's such a nice trade where everyone's come in and like whoa this thing's ripping fed's done this and blah blah whatever it may be off it goes and all of a sudden it starts coming back no worries no worries it starts going lower starts going low everyone's like oh geez right we've got to get out of here and all of a sudden it's getting pressed by that supply people are getting trapped it's just a nice trade anyway i digress so is there a catalyst present just watch out for that okay this probably has got a damn hour all to its own this but time of day as an intraday trader you know we really have to be in tune with the market you're trading you know i'm a big big advocate of, of being in tune and familiar with the potential supply demand inflection points so at time of day can often be you know kind of like the touch paper it can be a catalyst for a change in sentiment or an algos to get switched on very often you know imagine the european open European close happens 430. That very often causes a move on the Dow and the US indices because for whatever reason, maybe there's you know stuff money money flows around the globe, right? Flows from one market to the other, to one type of market to the next, and that money flow. And when one is closed, all of a sudden that just shifts what's available. And so what logically that's going to potentially, if it shuts off supply or it shuts off demand or some demand, some supply, and it was an equilibrium before, that could easily change things, right? It just makes sense. So we've got scheduled time of day that is super important, the European Open, European Close, US Open, US Close, obviously, if you're trading um, some stuff that carries on trading through that. And then, and, and there's other scheduled stuff as well. And there's observe things. And you know what? Uh, uh, this, is, this is something that you can come up with yourself. If you sit in front of the screen, you'll have probably seen some of these things. And we used to have, um, you know, thing called noon balloon, where very often the market would just push up, push up, push up, and have that final flurry into the noon time. This was Eastern. And then we've had power hour. We've had the final hour of the day on the strong stocks that just would run and run and run. Mr. 3 p.m., as I called him, used to come in all the time on the foot. So these are, these are things that have happened and they kind of disappeared and they happened and disappeared. Mr. 3 p.m., we called him, come in. He'd drive the footsie kind of five or 10 minutes in one direction, gone. He'd be like, what is that? Who cares? I'm, I'm getting long at 3 p.m. and I've got to stop him if he doesn't come back. And some days he would, some days he wouldn't, but you'd know. So the point is, is that if you're very familiar with potential supply, demand, inflection points, and you're very familiar with when markets start to move, is it the final hour of the day that's very strong or does it continue the trend of the day? And that familiarity with the market you're trading gives you the extra edge. You know, little patterns that you start to notice, like, oh, we often get, if we're trending, we often get one more little squeeze into that midday time. Or we often get a reversal. You know, one of the ones that happens, we haven't had it for a while, but one of the ones that happens is kind of that low, uh, you know, the low drive, uh, you know, a weak market, and it kind of pops up, and you get a little pop up, just the last, it's, it's almost 30 minutes to the close of the US session. And sometimes you set your watch by, it pops up, just takes out some traders, gets them in thinking it's reversal, and just goes, good night, and just flushes down to lows. Now, again, you've got to observe this for yourself and see these, these type of patterns. And, and this why becoming a specialist is so important, but observing these time of day inflection points and saying, okay, well, if I if I do that, if I trade at that time, does that give me any edge? Um, and uh, let me just check here. Yeah, so this, this little thing I've got on this little screenshot, by the way, guys, you can, the good thing about trading views, you can play around with things and you can kind of code little things up or get people to code things up and says, okay, well, if I go long, for an hour at this on this market every day what will the results be so you can kind of play around with stuff like that and i'm not a big um back testing algorithmic quantitative guy at all you know i'm screen screen time lots of screen time 20 whatever it is years ridiculously uh, you know screen time so that's where i feel i get my edge from but there's no, nothing no harm in saying well actually let me just see what the results are of that so you can get stuff like that done on trading that's kind of some of the power of trading view but I, you know i digress a little bit but Scheduled inflection points, observed uh, inflection points. Okay, let's move on. So, higher time frame. So, the higher time frame is so important. How many times have we said to ourselves, "Listen, the big money is just 
driving things. Big money is driving things. The higher time frame positions key, the higher time frame conditions key, the higher time frame trend is key. You know, and ask yourself these questions like, you know, if, you, if we're trading reversals, which is what we're doing at this moment, should we expect an intraday short to offer an extended trade target if the daily time frame is a strong uptrend? So in other words, if that daily trend is like, boom, 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 and we spot, you know, the microphone off, then are so animated about that uptrend, <laughs> boom, 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 and we're there selling a level, are we really expecting that to close on lows? Maybe there's a scalp opportunity, fine. But again, just understand where that higher time frame comes into the mix. And same when you think about those multi-month support levels, you know, they're going to hold. The likelihood is they're more likely to hold than some intraday level. So we can, as day traders, get very myopic on things and very uh, focused on the intraday price action. Your five minutes, your threes, your ones, you know, that type of thing. But just just remember where you're on the higher time frame. You know, and if you want to go one step further, kind of using that higher time frame to line up with what you want to see intraday. So you've seen the high time frame trend, you've seen it pull back. Maybe intraday you're buying a low for an expectation of a pop back that's going to give that green candle on the higher time frame. It's going to look like a nice little pullback type trade. So you start thinking ahead of the game. And honestly, guys, always keep an eye on that higher time frame. Um, even if you're a day trader, it just helps you align with the conditions and trend. And you know what I particularly like to do, and again, this is just a very personal thing, is you know, I like to very often align my intraday trades with the higher time frame only. So if I think that we're going to have a green candle on the day, maybe we, maybe we just have this, this strong push off a low and we're continuing, you know, I'm only going to look for longs intraday. I'm not going to even trade the short side. I'm just going to look for longs. Is it long or is it not? Rather than is it long or is it short? Is it long? Is it not? Yes. It's like, okay, I'm looking for long. So I'm either going to try and jump on a trend or I'm going to try and jump on a pullback. Just eases the cognitive load a bit. That's very personal. I know some guys go in there and are just very flexible about things. Okay, so high time frame, uh, you know, super important. And you've heard, heard this loads of times, guys. This is nothing new. I know this stuff is new, but it's just worth remembering. Just double check. Just look at that daily. Just look at the daily. Look, you look at your hourly, look at your four hourly. I know many of you trade that anyway, but just just think about that. All right, levels checklists. Don't mind if I take a little drink, guys. Okay, history does repeat. How can we use it to our advantage? So are we near to the prior high, low, close? How far away is today's open high, low? Where is the expected daily range? I'm going to look at that in a moment and show you how I go through the process of working out where potentially that reversal could happen. Where is, it, where is the expected daily range in relation to trade? Any static levels to be aware of? Any dynamic levels to be aware of? Okay, so you guys probably do this, but I definitely recommend marking on your chart your prior day's high, your prior day's low, your close, your um, your regular trading hours high, regular trading hours low. And, and yeah, on that PDF guide, you'll get some kind of checklist for that. But just making sure you're aligned with some of the major levels in the market. OK, now this is interesting. And um, we've got some a few minutes to cover this, which is good. So when I try to align my trades, I like to look at this. I like to go to the daily chart. And I use a 10 period ATR, right? And I go, okay, what's the what's the expected range of this day? And that's a broad statement, but if we're looking at the ATR and we say, okay, it's 275, fine. So at least I've got an idea of what I if we're in a if we if the conditions are very, very similar, that's what we're expecting to get. If we went back to you know mid-September on that chart, it's probably 175, right? So you're aligning and say, okay, that's what I I'm expecting the range to be that. So, so how, how, what's the point of how useful is that? So now we can go, okay, I, I like to use a 10 period, but you know, you can use a 14 period on the daily. We go, right, take that number, write it down, 275, and that helps us guide us to the expected range of the day. So what I then do is I then use that as a framework to get an idea where the high or low of the day could be. Like, well, that sounds a bit ambitious, but you know, guys, we're, that's, well, that's our job, right? We're trying to get these swing points. If we can get the high or low, great. Or if we could hold it. So this helps guide us. If I go right, 275. Okay, so what I would then do is I get the, that tool on trading view that would give me 275. And I go, okay, if I think the low of the day is in, where would 275 take us? So if I'm I'm making some assumptions, which we've got to, I assume that the the the, the, the trend and the and the volatility is going to be similar. And there's no reason to think that there's no catalyst, there's no data. So I, I can make that assumption. So I assume that we're going to get 275 bucks range. 
give or take, right? We're, that's an average, right? It's an average true range and it's average over 10 periods. So it's not, but it's, it's, it's a rough area. It's not 50, it's not a thousand. It's going to be about right. So if I look at the trade and go, okay, if I looked at this chart right now on the hard right, which is what we have in the real world, I go, okay, if I believe the low of the day's in, where would a normal daily move take us? A normal daily move would take us up to that level there because I've got my 275. If I think the higher the day is in, then I, again, use that tool and go, what would a normal day look like? So how useful is that? Two things. That's four. Two things. You go, okay, if I'm looking for a big reversal, I don't really want to be starting to fade reversals looking for a bigger move until I've seen that 275 point range. And Brenda mine is going to take some time to do and all the other stuff we've got to think about. But I'm not going to start selling it too early if if we've still got another 70 bucks our expected range to do. But if it's starting to come up to that $275 range, it's about the time of day when the range is put in. It's a level that's maybe done from before, key level from before. And I can go back and I can look three days ago and say that was a low and this and that. Other. I might go, well, that might be the, the place to initiate the trade. That might be the place to initiate the reversal because I've extended out the ATR and I've gone, that's what I expect from the market. Let's line, align ourselves with a normal distribution of what we expect in the market and wait for that. Similarly now, you know, if I go, right, this thing's a short. I've got myself aligned with a higher time frame. I think it's going to reverse here. If we retest that level, I think they've got the high end. Where am I looking for? I'm looking for a pushback under prior lows because that's where 275 is going to take us. Because if I think that's the high of the day, then then that's going to give us the range. And that might be like, okay, that's 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 maybe asking a bit much. Fine. But another way you can use it is if you are long and it's chugging along and you say, hey, I want to extract the most juice I possibly can out of this trade. Then again, you use that tool and say, maybe you got long, just it broke through that prior high. You're like, right, well, if if we if we do extend this and we have a normal type of day, and I, I believe I've got the I believe the low of the day's in, there's an assumption you've got to make, of course, and that's why you, you put a stop loss because maybe it reverses back. You don't know which one's going to play out. But if you assume that you are going to get 275 point range, which is probably quite likely because that's what the kind of average you've been doing, if you make that assumption, then you can go, well, actually, why don't I hold my trade until I at least get to 260? And then start to peel it off rather than trying to snatch snatch it early. Now, of course, you're making the assumption the lower the days in, but if you've made that assumption, then why close the trade? Because you know it's likely to do that range. And so, you know, using the ATR to structure the framework of the day, you know, I think is, is, is so, so powerful. All right. And the other thing is um, you've got the dynamic levels. So make sure you're just looking at your levels, as in, you know, your, you've got your overnight high, your overnight highs, your overnight lows, your highs, lows, your closes, all the other stuff. And you guys know how to draw the support resistance. And like I say, we're not going to go over kind of simple ground here and take things a little bit another level. And then the dynamic levels, some of you like to enjoy using moving averages, fine, VWAP, fine. And make sure you've got your levels checklist. All right, I'm going to whiz through the things a slightly bit quicker. Um, one thing to point out here is, um, and by the way, guys, I'm a big fan of VWAP. I know you guys like some of you guys like to move averages fine, but if you haven't looked at VWAP, definitely have a look at it. Maybe that'll kind of we can dig into that in a in a later webinar because I really think that's such a such a crucial uh, thing to have in your chart. But by the by, um, you know, I like to draw zones on my charts, not lines, and that's because you know, a line is very, very specific. Whereas if you draw a little rectangle, that's quite thick for that one example. But if you draw a rectangle, then you go, okay. You lose a sense of urgency a bit to trade, and that's good because it makes you structure the trade a little bit better and think a little bit more clearly about the trade. And it helps you go, okay, well, if I this isn't this isn't just gonna be to the tick, we're in the zone now. Maybe we pop out of the zone, come back, do a bit of work in the zone and rotate. A line makes you think like it's gonna hit and, and, and go lower. And then if you're in the trade, if it's just sitting in the zone, you don't feel so bad. So it's just a kind of a little bit of a hack, and you go, right, okay, let me just draw a zone. And a, again, personal preference maybe something for you to try during the zone rather than the line. Another thing is you know, just make sure you keep the just the major levels on your chart. It's too easy to go, well, that was a swing point. There. That was a swing point. Then you've got 10 or 15 levels and you don't know what the heck to do with them. Do I sell at that point? Do I buy at that point? Do I close the trade? Do I do this? Just keep things simple. And I like to just strip things back and go, right, what's the major levels on my chart? And 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 kind of going back to the checklist, uh, checklist, you know, I will look at the overnight high and low 
But then once we started to trade overnight, by I mean not outside regular trading hours. So before, so I'm trading the Dow, for example, anything before two thirty, which is UK opening time for the Dow, that will be the overnight session in my in my eyes. And then once we start to trade, and the regular trading session starts, and it starts to put highs and lows in, they become less important because very often we're going to tag the overnight high and low. There's some good stats behind that. Again, maybe another webinar, but then the actual current regular trading hour session becomes more important. So I can get rid of those. And I want to just keep my charts as clean as possible. I don't want to be cluttered up and to be constantly think it's hard enough in a trade to hold it for that final target than to be in a trade and go, well, there's a, there's a, there's a line there. Well, what's the line mean? I don't know. I drew it. It must be important. I need to do something. And then you just default to closing the trade and go, well, I bunked a profit. I feel good. And you know that that's not going to get you to where you want to be. You know, sometimes you've got to stretch and hold these trades. So, uh, and also remembering the time that this level's tested and what happened before. In other words, you know, the difference going back, hopefully, to that, how you're thinking about the market, the supply and demand. Is it a drive at the open that kind of tagged the level and came back? Is that a meaningful level? Pro, pro, maybe not. Is it stretched and struggling market at noon? Like a big drive at the open, for example, if that's coming up to a level and it's a big drive, I'm not going to stand in front of it. It's an opening drive. An opening drives are powerful as hell. You know, they, you know, they can be, and I'm just going to wait and see that that could extend easily through the level and then maybe reverse and double test. Then I might get interested versus if that level was there and it was a market that was stretched, it'd been kind of, uh, and it's noon and it's lunchtime. And there's no volume. And it's just like limping up to that level. And you bet I'm going to wait and see if I can see a reversal candle there. I'm going to sit in front of that and I'm going to try and get short on that. Again, personal thing, not advice, but there's a difference to how the market approaches the level. And as a day trader, your job is to differentiate between those and go, hey, we're at the open. We're ramping off the open. This thing could rip. I don't want to step in front of this versus or, or if I do step in front of it, I want to see, damn, someone else has got to put their put their money first and see it come back and to retest and maybe do this. And a few more things for me to see before I even consider taking the short versus a market that's stretch, stretch, stretch out to a level. It's like running out of steam. It's been rotational. It's like the last little thing, right at noon, lunchtime, you know, then that's way more enticing as a trader from an intraday reversal perspective. All right. So, um, but, but before I go to the next webinar, guys, just run through the summary. The summary is we looked at things into thinking in terms of supply and demand. Okay. So keep thinking that you're observing a voting system, right? It's a voting system that's represented by the chart. And I think that we can get so caught up in the, the looking at the candles and trying to decipher the candles and it's just people behind it even the algos are coded by people so there's a brain behind it somewhere you know remember your conditions so again you get a copy of the slides guys you go to that uh master mastermind.com reversals you go back uh, slide nine we talk about the conditions so it's super important to get a feel for the conditions because no con your conditions are the same we want to have put the uh the weight in our favor or sort of or swing the odds in our favor should i say duration how long the trend's been going the urgency of the trend, you know, that's key for whether we want to step in front of it or wait for a bit of this and that. And sometimes just just being a bit cautious and going, oh, you know, do I want to that, that looks stretched? It's lunchtime. It's spiked up. It's left a lot of liquidity vacuum. I'll have a go there. I put my stop in I get a quick snatch profit, quick scalp to the short side. Great versus that grinding trend that's been going on and on and on. And there's no way I'm going to step in front of that. I need to see that pull back first and come back to so a different structure to the reversal and the catalyst. Has it been repriced completely or not? That it, it can often create a significant move in one direction. And that's important to remember. Time of day. There's one thing. I think this is the, the biggest one. It's if you really like, focus on your one or two markets, just recognizing the time of day, the difference, even as simple as going, there's the open, there's my lunchtime chop, there's my close. And then split it up into more and go, okay, we often get the open and we get a change of trend and we get that. And very often there's patterns to this. Why often algos are switched on our 30 minutes after the open? Often we get these stop runs at the open that drive through the Friday's low. That's a great pattern in itself. We had that Friday's low put in, boom, flush through the open, takes out everybody who thinks that, that it, especially we had a two or three day down move on the daily chart, takes everybody and then just rips straight back up. Very different structure to that lunchtime trade, which is grinding. Maybe it's just, just not letting people out. Different feel to it. So you know, thinking in terms of, hey, the, 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 the time of day, and what's the time of day doing? Time of time between rotations talks about that, or the length or the duration of rotations, should I say, and the higher time time frame. And then and then once you've got all that, which a lot of people aren't doing, this is why you know you get the edge by looking at that stuff and you go, it's different, different market, conditions are different, duration's different, trends different. 
And then you add stuff in like your levels, which everyone knows how to draw levels in. But you're, if you just filter out levels to be the really key ones, that's so much better. So you're over, uh, or you're open high, low, close, you're prior high, low, close, you're overnight high, low, all that stuff. And then framing that in terms of ATR and seeing where there's confluence and go, whoa, look, actually, if we do the range that we expect to do today, we're going to come right up to that prior day's high. Hmm. That's interesting. And if that's in the time of day, like it's a lunchtime and lunchtime happens to be the time in your market, we often see the reversals. How different is this to now look at the nuances of the intraday candles or the shooting stars, whatever it may be, versus just looking at that? That's a lot different. You've got this, this, this lined up and the reversal is far more likely to happen if you look at that data and, and assume that to be, OK, I'm aligning the the things in my in my favor rather than just taking that candlestick pattern that everyone knows in the middle of nowhere or in the middle of the open it's a much a much more different professional approach you're thinking differently from the rest you're not just drawing the lines on your chart and fading every move you're kind of aligning with the bigger players the rhythm you're playing chess not checkers you're taking all the relevant info and, and stacking that the odds in your favor and so okay guys you know that's it for this webinar um We'll do some questions in a moment, but next webinar, I want to talk uh, kind of part two on this, which is risk management, stops, targets, when to run the reversal trade, ideas to improve your entry. So we're going to take it one step further because we need to manage the risk. We need to understand where the stop's going to be, you know, how we're going to come up with the targets, when to run it versus when to just take the A to B trade, how to come up with the target, ideas to improve the entry. If you kind of FOMO into stuff, how do we kind of throttle things back? How do we adjust? How do we use you know, some of the thinking to get a little bit of better entry and not miss out on stuff. So I'm going to go into, into depth about that. So, uh, yeah, if you, yeah, tradersmasterman.com forward slash reversals, I told you about that. What else? Get the checklist, get a copy of the slides, happy to give you that. And you'll get notified of the next webinar um, if you get that. Hope that's helpful. Any questions far away? Um, there's a couple here I'll have a look at. How can you tell? If it's the low or high of the day, you can't. <laughs> you can't tell. You have to basically go <clears throat> make make. You have to make some assumptions as a trader, right? You have to basically say, okay, we know that the low, the high and low, especially in the indices, are put in the opening thirty minutes. So if you've seen that flush to the downside, and then it's popped off that. Then we kind of, and, and especially if it's aligned with some, some sort of higher time frame, all this other stuff, we go, well, actually, um, that's interesting because that could easily be the low of the day because we know that the low of the day is often put in the first 30 minutes and we know that we've kind of flushed low on the higher time frame. You start to make some assumptions. Now, obviously, we manage the risk and we don't just blindly go in, but that gives it maybe an indication that we could have the higher day or the lower of the day. Same if we saw that got a noon pop and it's stretched, and it's right away from the VWAP and it's about a prior high, but it's not much volume and all that, and it starts to come back off here. You know, that could easily be the higher of the day. Much more different to, you know, a, you know, just a nothing move in the middle of nowhere or, or some other different structure to it. So it's about making kind of some assumptions. Uh, what's a liquidity vacuum? So a liquidity vacuum is, you know, when, when price is... You know, in the order book, you've got these levels stacked up. You've got buyers and sellers stacked up. And when a buyer comes in, let's say a buyer hits the market and it kind of takes the order, bang, 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 bang. He takes all those bid, it takes all his offers, sorry. And then he maybe he's putting some, and there'll be algos that are just putting some bids in. You leave this liquidity vacuum where before the order book was quite thick, maybe you had hundreds stacked on each level, just for argument's sake, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds. He comes in and buys 2,000. There's a few little scraggly twos and ones and fives and tens that are in that bid on the way up. So the price levels are filled with twos and threes and fives and tens rather than hundreds. All of a sudden, that takes hardly anything for it to sweep back down. So that's where you get those liquidity vacuums, especially you guys that trade DAX know this all too well. It goes through a low, flushes through a low, boom, and this rips back, hardly giving you any time to get in the deal. That's because the order book has just gone super, super thin and someone's come in and it's not taken, you know, 25, 50 lots for it to just shoot back up five or six price levels. So that's kind of really looking into the structure of the market much more. And you definitely don't need that. But if you understand how that works, and understand how trades are transacted and what's going on beneath the surface, then I think it gives you, you know, a bit of, bit of help. Um, all right, guys, if that's it. 
I uh, will we'll call it a day there. Thank you so much for uh, joining me. Appreciate your time. Uh, yeah, be alert to the next webinar. I really enjoyed it. Hopefully got some value from it, tactical stuff. And we'll, we'll look forward to convening again um, for the next one for part two. So appreciate your time, guys. Tradesmastermind.com forward slash reversals. Get your PDF and get your copy of the slides. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye-bye.